So we got the absolute value question answered. How else did that section go? Anything you want to talk about? Yeah. 46. 46, that would be a calculator problem, I believe. So we got the radius of a sphere with volume V can be found with a formula. So we got R equals the cube root of um, 3V over 4 pi. Okay. And determine the radius for volumes. I'll probably just do one of them. Um, so if I got 1,000. So this one I think we can do without a calculator. If I, if I well, no, <laughs> not really. Uh, so if I go 1,000, so I get the cube root of 3 times 1,000 uh, divided by 4 pi. So this one, I think it's just going to be a calculator problem if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So the thing you got to worry about here is when you type this in, let's go the cube root of 3 times 1,000 and your parentheses if, if your calculator requires parentheses. A lot of your calculators will go ahead and put a parenthesis here and you'll have to go times and then um, end your parenthesis and then it'll take the cube root of all that divided by 4 pi. Is that right? And what I what I just wrote, will that give me the right thing? No, not no. the most type of put that in parentheses. Got to put that in parentheses. Okay, I've got to go divided by 4 pi. Honestly, that's not how I do it because it's too many keystrokes. I like to minimize my keystrokes because this is one, two additional keystrokes. Another thing you could do is you could go divided by 4 and also divided by pi. You could do it either way. Okay? Get that? So was it a calculator issue? Okay, good. Okay. So, and you'll notice that this is actually number 13 from the, from the quiz that I gave you yesterday that, uh, that I told you you didn't have to do. It said the volume of a sphere was 4 thirds pi r to the third. Okay. Well, if I go ahead and solve both sides, uh, or I'm sorry, solve for r, and multiply by 3 fourths, so I get 3v over 4 equals pi r cubed. Now I'm going to divide by pi. Okay, so now my pi's are gone. Now what do I got to do to both sides? Cube root. Look familiar? Yeah. So that's the inverse. So the previous formula took us from radius to volume. Now this one is going to take us from volume back to radius. Okay? Anything else? Okay. I've never tried this before, but I just want to give it something a shot. Yeah, yeah, I can I can actually tell what color they are just by eating them. No, I'm just yeah, these I can actually. It's very easy. Very easy. Oh just shush. Okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> okay, so if I said okay, this is oh, you can't see colors. <laughs> well this may not work so well. Okay, well let's go ahead and sort them by green. I got reds and I got purples, okay? So now if I said, how many groups of three do I have? Right? It, I, we can answer the question, right? Mm -hmm. I've got a green group. I'm going to set it over here. Okay? I've got a red group of three. <laughs> and I've got two purple groups, right? Okay? <laughs> So, not like saying I want groups of three in multiplication wise of g to the third, r to the third, p to the sixth. You see how they relate? Because how many groups of three of g's do I have? One. What about r's? One. What about p's? Two. Okay. Just, just shut up. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, I just touched all those. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Not really, I just went to the bathroom. <laughs> no. Only when I poop. No, anyway, I'm just joking. No. Okay, no. I never do. Um, okay, no, I'm just joking. Okay, so now if I said I want to know how many groups of three. Okay. How many groups of three on the yellow? One. One with one left over without the buddies, right? Okay, how many groups of, so it's kind of like saying Y to the fourth. Okay, so I'm doing groups of three. Okay, how many groups of three of my reds? None, you don't have enough friends. Okay, how many groups of three of my, of my purples? One. How many groups of three of my greens? One, and how many people left inside? Okay, so this is like saying y to the fourth, r squared, p to the third, and we have g to the fifth, right? Okay, so here's what we have. y to the fourth. If I've got to take out groups of three, again, remind me, how many groups of three were there? One and there was one Y left in by itself. Make sense? Okay. Now, how many, in the red, there was only two to begin with. How many groups of three were there? Zero. None. So those had to stay all inside. Okay. How many groups of three were there here? One. So there was none left inside. Okay. What about my G's? one and there was two left inside that's one of the first things we're looking at today okay what could you write it as like y to the four yeah but we're going to get there in a couple days okay okay so let's do some examples here you go six six point five example from the menu dot com. Okay. So, if I said something like this, the cube root of 27, y to the 12th, z to the 7th. I need to do something more, more, more problems like that with candy in class because then when I become a diabetic, I can get workman's comp. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the cube root of twenty-seven? Three. three. And another way we can think about that: there's three, three, and three. There's a group of three. Okay. Why the twelfth? Four. four. There's four groups of y to the third. Now let's go my z to the seventh. How many groups of three are there? Two. Two. So I get z to the second, and what do I have left over? A z. Okay. I want to do this a little bit different way because I've had success with, with both of these ways actually. Well, if I'm going to skip down to here. What we could do is we could say, okay, what things have enough people to get outside and what don't? What do we have left over? So my 27, I know that. I know the cube root of y to the 12th. And inside y to the 7th, what do I know the cube root of? Z to the 6th. And now what do I have left over inside? Z. So everything's accounted for. 27, y to the 12th, z to the 7th, boom. Now I just go ahead and simplify. 3y to the 4th, z squared, and then I got a cube root of z left over. Boom, 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 shakalaka. Okay? Okay. So let's do another one. Um, what if I did this? Man, now I got these all these candy bits all over the place. I don't know. 12 C to the fifth D to the third. Okay? So now, 
This is where it might be helpful to see what the 12 is made up of. If you want to find the prime factorization of 12, not a bad idea. It's 2 times 2 times 3. How can we figure that out? We can do a factor tree. 12, 2, and 6, 2, and 3. It's 2 times 2 times 3. Okay? So now let's split them up. What has enough friends to get out the house? In my numbers. 2. two. So I'm going to go uh, of 2 squared. Let's just write it that way. Or you can go 4. Okay? And then what's going to stay inside? My 3. Okay? Now let's move on to my C's. What's going to be able to get out? My C to the... No. no. Oh, so yeah, C to the 4th. Good. Good. Okay? And inside would be... C, because it's four C's are going to get out because they're going out in pairs, okay? And then I've got my C. What about my D? D squared is going to get out, and then inside I've got D. Stop, take a deep breath. Let's make sure we got everything accounted for. Four times three gives me 12. Boom. C to the fourth, C gives me C to the fifth. D to the second, D gives me D to the third. Now we just square root everything. Square to two squared. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute value 2. No, I don't know. C to the 4th is square to C to the 4th. C squared. Uh, square to D squared. D. And then we've got left over. Absolute value. I'm sorry. Not absolute value. Square root of 3 CD. Okay. So if you like, split it up and do what, you, what, what can come out, what can't. And then simplify, you can. Otherwise, we can just kind of do it. How many groups of, how many groups of 2? Two groups of two with one left over. How many groups of two? One group of two with one left over. Now, for those of you guys that are higher level thinkers, what needs an absolute value around it? Now, my two started out positive, so it's going to finish positive. Does my c squared need an absolute value? Because it's squared. Okay? So, but I'm not going to grade you on that with quizzes. It's just kind of a little challenge for you. If you want to. You know, try and do those. You definitely can. Okay. No, you will not get any absolute value. They're abs extra credit. No, I wasn't gonna ask that. Was you won't say, get it wrong. Okay. Okay. Good. You have the absolute value in the wrong spot. Minus five. Now you didn't do the absolute value at all. Good job. Okay. No, I'm not gonna do that. Okay. So let's do this. Let's. Okay. Let's try one that's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge. Um, oh, let's go the cube root of 24 x to the 8th y, oh, you can't see it, can you? Okay, because I got it too bright, I was trying to tell the colors of that dumb candy. I wonder why that is. Hmm. Oh, let's go y to the 6th. Z squared. Try it. Keep in mind, you're looking for the cube root of a number. Okay? The cube root of 24 is breaking that up. How are you going to break it up? Okay? Freeze. Freeze frame. Little Jay Giles reference there. I would do these on whiteboards, but there's way too much to check. You're good. <laughs> We're good. No, wait. Yeah. Okay, so I've got this split up into what I can cube root and what I can't. 8 goes into 24, and I know the cube root of 8. Or if you want to look at your prime factorization of 24, that gives me 24, 2, 12, 2, 6, 2, 3. <laughs> I got a group of 3 twos. Okay? And 3 twos gives me 8, or you can just write that as 2 to the third. If you like the exponents, write them in exponents. Okay? So, I, I x to the 8th, I've got x to the 6th. That gives me a couple groups of 3. And i got 2 left over. 
y squared, not enough, so you're all stuck inside. Okay? So now, what's my answer then? Cube root of 8. 2. Cube root of x is 6. x squared. And left over is 3x squared z squared. Whoa, 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 whoa. Y to the 6. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, my bad. I just forgot the Y. So, but anyway, so this is kind of crunched together a little bit too much, but please make it clear what's exponents, what's my index. Okay? So, show me with your thumb gauge where you are at on doing this. Okay? Okay? Okay. Um... We've got other stuff that we've got to work on as well. Um, one last one. Fourth root. <laughs> 32. X to the ninth. Um, I'll just go Z to the uh, seventh since I forget Y anyway. Shouldn't. Well, I wouldn't say that you shouldn't, but it's things like. Mean, I gotta liven it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so put in some. <laughs> I could be, uh, I'll be Mr. Boring Teacher the rest no, of the No, I'm not saying that. No, I know, I, I know. So I used a word in the other class that I still regret using, so. Um, <laughs> so I try and keep it appropriate, but yet. <clears throat> what power of 2 is 32? That's 2 to the 2 to the 5th. 2 to the 5th. Okay. So I'm going to have to kind of go because we got a lot of other stuff we got to do. 2 to the 4th and 2. Cutting it up. X to the 8th and I got an X left over. Z to the what? Z to the 4th and I got Z to the 3rd left over. So now I got my groups of friends here that can go out and have a good time, and these two are stuck in the house playing wee bowling. Okay? Fourth root of two to the fourth is two. Fourth root of x to the eighth is x squared. Fourth root of z to the fourth is z. And then I've got times the fourth root of two x z to the third. Now this is a good example of this all builds upon the previous section. If you were struggling with the previous section, it's tough, so that's why you got to get your butt in here if you got questions. Moving on to the next deal. Okay, what if I had something like this? The square root. I know you can't see this. I'll get there. The square root of x to the sixth over y to the seventh. Okay. Simplifying radicals. Well, um, hmm. There's two ways we could do this. And I'll do it both ways. Let's simplify the top. What's square root of x to the sixth? x to the third. We know that. Now, x to the seventh, if we square root that, we have some that got out, some that stuck inside. What's going to get out? y to the, y to the sixth. And left inside is going to be a y. Okay? So now, when I have this, x to the third over y to the third squared of y. Okay. So all I did was simplify. I just used this example from the last problem, or, you know, the, the skill from the last problem to do this. We're not done though. We don't like square roots on the bottom. We just don't. Okay. So we have to do what's called rationalize the denominator. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of y. So I have x cubed square root of y. And on the bottom, what do I get now? y to the fourth. Because already hanging outside is three y's multiplied together. 
and these two together, square root of y times square root of y, gives me square root of y squared, which is y. So y cubed and another y gives me y to the fourth. Okay. Um, other way to do it. This is not square rootable, is it? So what would I have to multiply top and bottom by to make it square rootable? Two? No. Right now it's y to the seventh. What would I like it to be that's bigger than seven? Eight. Because remember, if I eight divided by two. So what I could do is I could jack this up right now to where I get x to the sixth y, oh, I'm sorry, square root of the whole thing, over y to the eighth. I could prep it for square rooting. Okay? So now it's prepped for square rooting since the bottom is going to be clean. And on the top, I get x to the third square root of y because square root of x to the sixth is x to the third and y is in by itself. Square root of y to the eighth is y to the fourth. So we have the first option, simplify and simplify, and then get rid of the square roots on the bottom. Or prepare it to be rooted, and then root it. Which one do you like better, option one or option two? Two, two. okay. Let's try a cube root. <laughs> okay. Let's go the fourth root of x to the seventh over y um, let's just go over y. You know what? I'm going to be here. Let's go y to the fifth. Okay. So, I'm still going to do this both ways, but I'll do it the way you like best. What do I have to multiply top and bottom by to make the bottom rootable? Y cubed. Y cubed. Because right now there's five y's. It's got to have sets of four. I got to have four, can eight candies up here now. Okay, so to get to a multiple of four, I got to go three more y's. So then, what do I have? I've got the fourth root of x to the seventh y to the third over the fourth root of x or y to the eighth. Go simplify. This is using the skills from the last one. We have to cut this up into two days, which is okay. I'm just prepping it, okay? Prepping the patient before surgery, okay? So on the top, I have an X, because there's one group of four that came out. What's left inside? The fourth root of X to the third, Y to the third. Fourth root of Y to the eighth, Y squared, okay? So kind of look at this as bunches of candies. How many candies do I have to add to the bottom to get just groups of four? I had five there. I need three more to get me eight. So then I've got two groups. Okay? And the top is the skill we just used before. Okay? Now, this gets a little bit more complicated when I do something like this. You guys are like, oh, I hate Mr. Retro. He makes things so difficult. I just I don't get anything he says. <laughs> okay. This one's going to make your teeth sweat. <laughs> <laughs> They're already gone. <laughs> uh, you're, you're just salivating over the challenge is what you're doing. <laughs> How do I do this one, Rex? <laughs> mm, okay. Now, here's the problem. This y to the fifth, I think that one's pretty doable. Okay? What do I have to multiply top and bottom by to get my y to the fifth where it needs to be? Y. y. Because right now i got five. I need groups of three, so I need six. 
okay and whatever I do to the bottom I got to do to the top now my 12 is a different monster what is my 12 made up of well my 12 is made up of a 2 a 6 a 2 and a 3 so look at what I've got I've got two twos and a three so let's look at it this way two squared times three so that is not cube rootable what do I have to multiply by to make it cube rootable two because now that'll give me three twos hallelujah por favor hallelujah. all right I'm glad you guys know what por favor means okay what about my three Yeah, because this is 3 to the first. I need 3 of them, so I'm just going to go 3 squared or 9. The top's just along for the ride. And this is like the sloppiest writing ever. Okay. Actually, I've had it worse. Anyway, so now let's simplify this, just so, I, just so I'm staying all right here. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this together. 2 and 3 squared gives me 18 x to the third, y, and the bottom I get the cube root of, well you know what, I'm not worried about multiplying this all out, let's just leave it, 2 to the third, y to the third, that looks good, I got groups of three, okay, it's kind of like you, they live in, a, in an area of town where it's not safe to go out by yourself, you got to have three people with you, okay, um, and what else do I have, oh, whoa, 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 how about 2 to the 3rd, 3 to the 3rd? Does that seem better? And y to the... No, uh, y to the 6th. So, my focus is on the bottom. My focus is on the bottom. Why? Because I had a 3 to the 1st. If I don't do the 3 squared, Remember, I've got to clean up the bottom so there's no roots anymore at all. Okay? I got 3 to the first. I don't know the cube root of 3 to the first. So I need to get to the cube root of something. I need to get to something. Oh! And by all means, stop me, ask me, any of you guys. Because that's what we're all here for. Okay? So if I cube root the top, I really can't. Oh, is there anything I can take out of the top? X. X. And then the rest of the junk is left inside. So it's x to the third. Uh, no, x. Cube roots of 18y all over. Let's just do this in terms of 2 and 3. Cube root of 2 cubed. 2. Cube root of 3 cubed. 3. Cube root of y to the sixth. y to the second. Good. So now I'll simplify. X cube roots of 18y all over 6y squared. Okay? So now in the interest of time, we're not going to do a whole nother example, but I just want you to tell me what you're going to multiply top and bottom. I'll I'll watch the I'll watch the clock. You watch me. Okay. <laughs> the fourth root. Okay, now we're not going to do this whole problem, but we're just going to I'm going to ask you. What do you multiply top and bottom by? Let's say I did my prime factorization. I had 2 squared times 3 times 5 to the 3rd. I'm going to make this one a little bit funky monkey here. And I got x to the 9th z. Yeah, x to the 9th z. You just tell me what I'd multiply top and bottom by. That's all I want to know. No, no, no. You just, just write it down. And I want you to do it rather than... And then, and then listen to somebody who gets it. We're preparing the patient for surgery. We're going to cut you up into four parts. And we don't want any leftover parts because we've got to have four parts to put them in the wood chipper. Okay. <laughs> so what should I multiply top and bottom by? Two, 
2 squared. Because that will give me 2 to the 4th. What about my 3? I've got to multiply down bottom by 3. Right now it's 3 to the 1st. 3 cubed. Remember, I need sets of 4. So I've got to multiply down bottom by 3 cubed. Okay. 5 to the what? first because right now I got three you got to recruit one more friend mom said I can't go out unless I have four people I don't like you but come with us X to the what X cubed that's right because we have nine look at your next power of uh, your next multiple of four we want to get up to X to the twelfth what about my Z Z cubed. Now granted, that one's beyond brutal, but that's all right. You can deal with it. Okay. Okay, so we've got those two. I just, I know it took a, it took a while, but I wanted to make sure and go through plenty of examples to hopefully make sure you got, got that figured out. So, okay. Um, Well, it doesn't leave us many examples to work with here. Um, that's the way it goes. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Page 419er. Um, let's do 1 through 5. 5 I haven't told you how to do yet, but combine them and simplify. Excuse me. 18 through 24. Um, let's go 24. And I think tomorrow's probably going to be a little bit easier conceptually, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Forty-five, forty-nine. Let's continue our ACT prep, sixty-six through sixty-nine, and we will stop there. Okay, have a good time for questions tomorrow, and then. Oh yes, oh, the one we took, the one we took yeah, yesterday. I know. I had this, I had this panic in my head that I forgot to grade something, and then you guys were not going to get a homework assignment. But that's tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I do have that plan. Okay, <laughs> it was a look of panic. It was a look of. I, it was. It was. It was. The, it was the look of. Oh my gosh, maybe I didn't do my job, and the kids caught me. Um, so, and not anything about you. I was fearful for my own safety. Um,